Welcome to Type-C Tech Reviews. Today we're going to be doing a review of the Cori 24E4. If at any point during the video you want to check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. But let's jump into it. All right, now right off the bat, this is a 24 inch screen size with a resolution of 1920 by 1080p. Now this brings the PPI or pixels per inch Essentially how crisp and clear this image is actually going to appear to your eye. This brings it to about 93 pixels per inch, which means small text is going to have visible pixelation, but games, movies, images, uh, things of that nature will appear crisp and clear. And really anything with movement is going to be good. Now, this is a great resolution for laptops, less powerful gaming rigs, or if you're someone who has a less powerful rig that just wants to hit those higher frames, um, a 1080p resolution at the screen size is really, really good. Now, as for the panel type, this is a VA panel. And VA panels, while they do have some benefits over IPS panels, uh, do suffer from, well, ghosting. Most of them do. We'll talk about the tuning in this video, uh, but the viewing angles, as you can probably see on camera, are not great. Uh, they diminish fairly quickly, uh, but that's to be expected with more uh, budget options here. No, this is 165 hertz natively and does have FreeSync. Now, the FreeSync works well with G-Sync, and I noticed no visible screen tearing during my gameplay testing using this monitor. And at this price point, that is not expected. Uh, at this price point, almost every monitor has screen tearing, so that's impressive that it doesn't. Now let's talk brightness. This is an extremely budget-oriented monitor, which means I did not have high hopes here for the brightness. This is rated at 250 nits, and I was really expecting it to be a little bit lower than that. However, it wasn't. This hit around 280, a little bit higher than 280 nits of brightness, which is very, very good. Now, if we're talking HDR, no HDR support here, not on this monitor, we do expect that. So you're getting 280 nits of brightness. Your average display is going to be within that range, probably from uh, 280 to 320. That's probably your typical average range for a typical monitor. We're not talking higher end monitors here, we're just talking a typical monitor. So this is brighter than its rating. And if you're in a dimly lit room, it is nice and vibrant in terms of brightness. We'll talk about colors, but that is how you're going to want to game on this. It's totally reasonable to use this uh, in a room with lights on, uh, but if you want a really enjoyable gaming experience without any reflections, well, you're gonna wanna be in a dimly lit room for this. Now, let's talk about one of the things that I don't like, and that is the matte finish over this. Every gaming display pretty much on the market has a matte finish. This one's is on the worst side of it, but we do expect that. Now, this is going to give an oil smear effect or a dirty screen effect to this. However, this is cheap enough uh, where you could legitimately attempt a DIY removal of that matte finish. You essentially soak it uh, in, in a damp cloth overnight and you should be able to peel it off. But that's an issue that, well, if you're actually buying this monitor, you'll have to see if that's actually something that's going to bother you or not. Beggars can't be choosers. This is very budget friendly. And the biggest thing here is the fact that you can get 165 Hertz and a competent gaming monitor at this ridiculously good price point. All right, now for colors. This monitor claims to hit 85% of the DCI-P3 color space and 85% of the NTSC color space. Now, I immediately did not think that that was true as there's a lot of other data that uh, Kuri actually puts out that is like obviously not true. After I did a quick calibration, this covered 99.1% of the sRGB color space and 74.4% of the DCI-P3 color space. Now, this is exactly what I expected, essentially 100% coverage of that sRGB color space. Um, I did not believe those other numbers when they came out. And, and this is actually... Well, exactly what you'd expect. We're at a point in time where you're getting full coverage, really, of the sRGB color space. Now let's talk accuracy. Out of the box, um, the accuracy was like not great, and obviously this is going to change by monitor, um, but it was better than I expected. The green hues were way oversaturated, so there was definitely too much green in there uh, and not enough red and blue. However, it wasn't terrible. It was not unusable at all, and if you don't have a calibration tool, which you probably don't, that's totally okay. This is probably going to be usable. It was significantly better than I expected. Now, as far as what this can output, this can output 8 bits of color, which you might think, well, it can only output 8 bits of color. Well, no. Outputting 8 bits of color is actually quite good, as monitors in this price range, and even higher, sometimes can only do 6 bits of color. So this is actually really good here. Now for the contrast ratio. More of these crazy, crazy claims. 
This claims a 20 million to one contrast ratio. So I'm sorry if you were hoping to get OLED blacks when you unbox this, but no. All joking aside, after I did some testing, this hit about 3,100 to one, which is right in line with most other VA panels uh, in this price range. So you are gonna get deeper blacks than on an IPS panel, significantly deeper blacks. Night scenes are going to look better. That's with an asterisk, as we're gonna talk about that in the next section. But yeah, overall, it's great. If you do wanna watch movies on this, uh, if it's your only monitor in your room, uh, this will look better with, well, movies overall, just because it has a higher contrast ratio. But but with that, let's talk about the response time and ghosting. This has a slower response time as you probably would expect, and that does cause a significant amount of ghosting, not only in darker areas, but also in lighter areas, which is usually an indicator of a lot more ghosting. So the response time is quite slow. This is the biggest con against this monitor, but at the same time, the fact that you get 165 Hertz uh, in any monitor at this price point, that is a competent gaming monitor is crazy. Now, if you're incredibly prone to ghosting, you probably aren't at this point. Uh, many people that are prone to ghosting, it's a learned behavior. Although you might be, depending on if you're playing on an IPS panel that is your laptop or something else. If you're very prone to ghosting and you know it, this won't be the monitor for you. If you don't care, beggars can't be choosers here, um, this is going to be fine for you. If you don't know what ghosting looks like on one that's this extreme, it will essentially look like motion blur that is darker. So most of the darker colors will essentially have a motion blur, uh, a smearing effect, and it is quite noticeable. Uh, sometimes during game, it's, it's annoying in some areas, but again, if you go into this knowing, hey, this is really, really inexpensive, um, and well, that's what you're paying for. You do have to increase your budget if you wanna get away from that stuff. To give you an idea of the ghosting, you will not only see ghosting with white text on a black background, which is pretty common amongst VA panels, but you will see ghosting with black text on a white background, uh, which is far less common to see very noticeably, and it is quite noticeable here. All right, but now let's talk the menu system and controls. We're actually gonna do it here on camera. This might be hard for me to lean over, so I'm gonna pull this a little bit over to me. That way you can actually see the size of it, 24 inches. They have these five buttons on the bottom right here. We have power on the right side and that's dedicated just for your power button, uh, which is actually good. I do like that. It turns on and off pretty quickly. And then you have this really complicated, uh, terrible menu system. You can see the graphics are pretty bad. It's super difficult to navigate it. And then once you go in, you have to press E for enter. And like you can get used to it, but there's not a lot of menus. I mean, you can see here, if I'm gonna to try to change my brightness, I gotta go over here, press, oh, accidentally just turned it off uh, because there's no difference in what it feels like. So it's gotta boot back on now, back into the menu system, back over actually, enter in, enter into the brightness, and there we can finally turn it up or we can turn it down. Actually, I said that opposite, now we're turning it up. So the menu system is pretty bad. The graphics are, well, they look terrible. They're not super, super easy to understand. Um, the menu system sucks overall. I think it's actually a generic menu system that comes from China, because I think I've seen that menu system on a different monitor. It's not coming to my mind right now, but yeah, menu system is bad overall, but you can use it. Just don't be expecting to want to go in and consistently change your settings uh, if you're someone who likes to do that. Now, as far as VESA compatibility, well, you can see four little screw holes right here on the back. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Four little screw holes right there on the back. It's compatible with 75 millimeter by 75 millimeter base mounts. And I really would recommend mounting this because we'll talk about it in the stand and build quality, but this was a little bit low on the desk and there's no height adjustability here. So I would recommend, I think this is a $30 monitor arm. I've tested it um, for quite a while at this point and it's very, very good. So if you do end up getting this monitor, I would recommend pop 30 bucks and have a fantastic experience uh, with a monitor arm. So we'll also link that below to Amazon, but let's go over the ports. Uh, I'm gonna unplug this for now, hold this closer up to the camera. Actually, I'm just gonna bring it over. It's got two HDMI 1.4s, one display port, 1 1.2, and then three and a half millimeter audio out. And well, that is it on the back of this because well, that's pretty much what you expect, isn't it? Now, let's talk stand and build quality. Firstly, everything's plastic. The back of this is all plastic, uh, but it does feel like well put together. The stand, again, is mostly all plastic, but you do have some metal down there on the feet, which is actually kind of, well, kind of cool to see. Overall, the design of it, as you can see, is 
unoffensive, it's fairly basic looking, and you do also have nice slim bezels, which I really do like. All right, just plugged it back in so you can see how slim those bezels are. Look at how slim those are. For a monitor like this, that's actually pretty dang impressive and it looks very attractive. However, again, like I said in the vase mounting section, uh, it sits a little bit low. You can see how low it sets. You only have tilt here. I'll show you from the side, you have tilt. Not a ton of tilt either. So that is all of the tilt you have. Uh, and that's the only adjustment you have. So I really, really would recommend a monitor arm for this. That would totally, it would change the usability of this, especially since the VA panel and you really wanna make sure you're dead straight in the center right here. You wanna make sure your head is right there. Not that close, but uh, just for the viewing angles. All right, but now let's move into probably the most important section of the entire video, which is price and value. Now I picked this one up myself for around 120 to 125 bucks, which is an incredibly good price for a 160 hertz monitor. Now this has a list price of $200. I don't think it's worth it at that price point, but at around that 120, $125 price point, uh, this is incredibly good. I mean, you're getting a very competent 160 hertz panel that yes, does suffer from ghosting. However, you gotta remember that if you're buying this, you probably don't have a lot of display experience and well, ghosting may or may not bother you. It's kind of a 50-50 with people that are not super into displays. Um, if that doesn't bother you, this may be great for you, especially if you do play non-competitive games, maybe slower style games, Red Dead Redemption, uh, GTA, Farming Simulator, I don't know. Age of Empires, right? This is gonna be better for those kinds of games than it is FPS, although it's very competent in FPS games. Really, the only thing you're suffering there is the ghosting, um, which definitely gets in the way, but at the end of the day, I was still getting kills. I was still top of the leaderboard. Now, if you do have a higher budget or if this is currently priced when you guys are watching this, not at that $120, $125 price point, but at its list price of $200, I definitely don't recommend that. And if it is priced at that, or if you have a budget that goes up to that, I would recommend the LG 24 GN650 or GN600. The difference between the 50 and the 600 is just the premium stand. The 600 has a stand similar to this one, uh, and the 650 has a fully height adjustable tilt and rotation stand. But that one's around $200, and it is significantly better than this one in every way except for contrast ratio as it has an IPS panel. But if you're into FPS gaming, you want a fast paced gaming monitor, that is a better monitor and a fantastic pickup. But if you want to stay on an incredibly tight budget, this is a very competent monitor with really one big issue, which is the smearing. All right, if you want to check either of these monitors out, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. Let me know what you think of the new studio set and having the monitor up here so I can feel it, touch it, and show it to you guys. I might've been a little bit awkward with it on the desk since it's the first time I've been doing that, but I'll get better. All right, this is Type C Tech Reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next video.